Gracie Elizabeth Spinks was born on the 19th of October 1997 in Chesterfield, Derbyshire, England. After leaving college, she qualified and worked as a lifeguard and swimming instructor at Queen's Park Leisure Centre in Chesterfield. However, due to what was happening around the world in 2020 and 2021, she got furloughed. For those of you that don't know, that basically means she, due to the leisure center closing, there was no work for her. It's a bit like being made redundant, but only temporarily. And I expect she was getting paid while on furlough, as the government was subsidizing furlough pay. So with no work to do, she got a job at Xbyte in Chesterfield as a warehouse operative. At this time, she's living in Old Whittington in Chesterfield with her parents. She was a keen horse rider and kept a horse at Blue Lodge Farm in Duck Manton, which is about five miles away. I also read that she was a part-time model. Gracie was a vivacious, outgoing, friendly and amazing young woman, fiercely independent and busy living life to the full, looking forward to the future and all it promised. She had a younger brother and a younger sister. In February 2021, she reported a colleague to the police for stalking. This colleague was Michael Sellers, and he had been her supervisor at the warehouse where she worked. Born on the 7th of February 1986, Michael Sellers was from Sheffield, which although it's a huge city, neighbouring Chesterfield. In June 2021, at the age of 35, 12 years Gracie Senior, it was reported that he had become a nuisance at work to her and work had dealt with it. He did wait at the horse field one morning before, which really spooked her, and that prompted her to ring the police. It certainly seems that they gave him the sack because of his behavior toward Gracie. Some news articles do report that. In response to Gracie reporting Michael for stalking, the police went and spoke to both Gracie and Michael, but not much more was done. 23-year-old Spinks was last seen alive by her mum at 7.30 a.m. on the morning of Friday the 18th of June, 2021, when she left home to tend to her horse. She drove to Blue Lodge Farm, which is about 5 miles away, so we're looking at 10 to 15 minutes driving time. Then, just after 8 a.m., only half an hour after she left home, two people found her unconscious in the horse's field, bleeding heavily. One of the witnesses reported seeing a man running away up Tom Lane. Initially, the people who found her thought she had been kicked by the horse. One of them carried out CPR on Gracie, but she was unresponsive. The first paramedics arrived on the scene at 8.17 a.m., and when they did, they realized her injuries were caused by a serious assault with a weapon, and so the police were called by at 8.40 a.m. Resuscitation procedures were performed by the paramedics. However, at 8.50 a.m., Gracie's life was pronounced extinct. A post-mortem was carried out and found the cause of death was a stab wound to the neck, which cut through the carotid artery and jugular vein and then the cervical spine. The cervical spine relates to the vertebrae in the neck just below the skull. For those of you who are wondering, there was no evidence of a sexual assault, which I think is expected due to the time frame. Police attended the area of Blue Lodge Farm just after 9 a.m. following the discovery of Gracie. Shortly after, Michael's vehicle was found on Rectory Lane, which is adjacent to the fields of Blue Lodge Farm. Now that's what we read, but after searching it up, we can't find a rectory lane in Duck Mountain. There's a rectory road, but no rectory lane, and that's strange because there are a ton of news articles that say lane. An area search then commenced, looking for Michael Sellers, and at 11 a.m., Mr. Sellers' body was found by local residents. Now, there are actually a few different versions of where Michael was found. The most common state that he was either found on Blue Lodge Farm, near the stables, surrounded by trees and bushes. Others state he was found in a field about half a mile away. Either way, he was unresponsive and cold to the touch. The East Midlands Ambulance Service was called, and at 12.10 p.m. he was pronounced life extinct. It is suspected that he took his own life by starving his body of oxygen. Gas canisters were found close to his body. Mr. Sellers was formally identified by his father at 2.30 p.m. on the 20th of June, 2021. The police looked closer at Michael's movement that morning and discovered that just after 6.30 a.m. on the 18th of June, Mr. Sellers left the family home in his own vehicle. Gracie's funeral was held on Friday, the 23rd of July, at Old Whittington Church. Near Gracie's 24th birthday, 
Her parents spoke out and accused Derbyshire police of letting her down before her death. Mum said, we feel like she was really let down by the police. She made a complaint and they just basically didn't join up the dots. Yes, join up the dots. A bag full of weapons had been found near where Gracie was murdered just weeks before. We'll look at that closer in a second. On the 21st of June 2021, just three days after Gracie's murder, Derbyshire police made a Facebook post and within it said, We can confirm that the force has referred itself to the Independent Office for Police Conduct, IOPC, because we had contact with Gracie earlier this year. One year later, on the 8th of June 2022, the IOPC concluded its investigation. During that year, they looked into their interactions with Gracie, particularly her report that Michael was stalking her. In November, in a progress update, they said, Our investigation is considering whether the force carried out all its safeguarding obligations to Miss Spinks and whether its investigation into the stalking matter was carried out in accordance with relevant police guidelines and policies. The update also mentioned the bag that was found. So let's look at that because I think that's appalling. Basically, a local woman found a brown Nike rucksack on a farm track really close to where Gracie was murdered. Apparently it was only around 300 yards away. Inside the bag was an axe, a hammer and several knives, which looked to me like assault knives. Either way, they were serious knives. There was also clothing, a water bottle, a piece of paper with the words don't lie written on it and a receipt. The woman phoned the police and they came and retrieved it. Let's bear in mind this is only six weeks before Gracie was stabbed. Strangely I haven't read anywhere that the bag was tested for fingerprints or DNA and let's face it there's a water bottle and clothing there's a good chance it will have DNA. Either which way a bag containing such things is extremely suspicious to be just laid abandoned. It's reported that it was later deemed that the receipt inside the bag was linked to the family home in which Michael Sellers lived. So we have a bag full that's extremely suspicious, found near a farm where Gracie, who has recently reported someone for stalking, one that she frequents really often, and it's linked to the person who she has alleged is stalking her. After an investigation, disciplinary notices were served on five police officers. Two were served with notices over their handling of her allegations of stalking against Michael Sellers. A sergeant and two constables were served with misconduct orders over the steps they took regarding the bag of weapons. It was determined that disciplinary proceedings in the form of a misconduct meeting should be brought against each officer. Nine months ago, in October 2022, to mark Gracie's 25th birthday, Gracie's Spinks.com was set up to share Gracie's story. Her family has campaigned for Gracie's Law, which would increase funding for investigating stalking cases, the entire point on their petition which gained 100,000 signatures, so it got discussed in Parliament in 2022, is not only to raise the funding for police forces in regards to stalking, but raise awareness and get people, especially authorities, to take it more seriously. There have been changes made because of their efforts, but as far as I can see, Across the country, more can be done and more should be done. On the Crown Prosecution's website, it states, Trials are neither initiated nor pursued against those who have died. So for that reason and that reason only, nobody has been charged or convicted for this murder.